I'm Spencer Myers and I'm here with Scott Garvey. We're outside of Carmen, Manitoba today doing some testing. This year we're testing three different UTVs. So Scott, can you break down what we're testing and how we're going to test them? Well, Spencer, we have three different manufacturers represented here today. We have a diesel model from Mahindra. We've got a, a Can-Am Defender Pro with a long wheelbase. And we also have one of Kubota's newest models, the uh, Sidekick 850. You know, we've tested UTVs in the past and put them through their paces, but the test course we've designed today is probably the most difficult test course we've ever put together for these machines. So we're gonna be able to test a wide variety of performance factors, acceleration, maneuverability. As well, we have a load prepared that we're gonna put in the bed of each one of these machines. And we also have a weighted trailer prepared, so we're gonna be towing as well as hauling. All the kinds of things that you would expect these machines to be able to do on the farm. We're gonna do here today, and we're gonna let you know how the machines performed. This year's event is sponsored by BKT, and the machines have been supplied by local dealers. So Scott, we just finished the unloaded portion of our testing today. This is the Mahindra XTV 1000 supplied by Hydro Egg Supply. So let's talk about what we liked and what we didn't like about this machine here. Well, capable machine, diesel, the only diesel in the test. So we're getting more noise. We're getting a, a bit of a slower acceleration than you would expect on a gas model. So that's to be expected because of the difference in design. Um, this is one of two that's, that's supplied with a cab. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have a cab, but one of the things I didn't like about this cab was well, a couple of things actually. I don't much care for the design of this door handle. It's uh, two fingers in there to get it open. Uh, kind of, if you had winter gloves on, that might be kind of a difficult thing. Uh, these windows, kind of reminiscent of an old European car where you can only slide them half open, and this machine did not have air conditioning so it got a little hot in here you yeah. you can open the op open the windshield on this model to help with airflow mm -hmm. but on a 30 degree celsius day like we've had today it gets a little warm in there it really does inside the cab uh i like those seats they're really nice they seats are. are comfy they're well met well designed and I found that it was comfy to drive, but again, you had a bit more cab noise in this than maybe the other Kubota that we have with the cab. Let's talk about kind of the back of the machine. What did you like or dislike about the, the tailgate or the bed? So this has a hydraulic bed, the only machine in our test group that does. So button on the dashboard, uh, your yeah. box will tilt, um, which if you had a load of firewood or, or anything that you didn't want to manually hand bomb out, that's gonna be pretty handy. Something that the other manual lifts, they're not gonna unload a heavy, a heavy cargo. Sides fold down, so you can essentially create a flat deck with this, although you do have the short box, mm -hmm. and the box is steel, but it does have an aluminum uh, deck in the bottom, so should be fairly sturdy. Yep, and storage on this one, uh, there isn't any under seat storage. There's a small storage compartment in the front. Um, what, what were your dislikes and dislikes? Yeah, this is, when it comes to storage compartments, this is the least equipped okay. of, of our test vehicles. All you've got is a standard glove box like you'd have in a, in a car or pickup truck. Uh, so if you had a lot of tools that you kept in your, in your machine a lot permanently, you would have to use bed space for that. 
But other than that, capable. Uh, it's got uh, four, two or four wheel drive selectable and rear differential lock. And we tested that traction ability of it. Yeah. No problems at all on hill climbing mm -hmm. and in soft dirt. Um, but we did manage to find that we had hit the power limitation of this on some steep hill climbs. Yeah. Let's take a look at the Can-Am. So Scott, this is the Defender XT. As you can see, uh, when we cut to a wide shot, this actually has the long box on it. I was quite surprised at how maneuverable this machine was, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Let's talk about the other things that we liked and disliked about this machine. Yeah, the Defender Pro XT, not the first time I've driven one. I knew a bit of what to expect here. This is a very powerful machine, um, 82 horsepower, uh, which puts it head and shoulders above the other two that we're testing. And we saw that, what that does to its performance on the hill climb simply just went up with no trouble at all. Storage on this machine is head and shoulders above all the rest. There's, there's storage everywhere, including a full pass-through uh, right under the box. The box is six feet long, so again, different than the others. And also the sides will come off so you can have a flat deck on this. One of the things Can-Am has done is put a lot of effort into silencing their machine, and we noticed that during the drive. This is a fairly quiet machine yeah. when you're sitting in the cab. Reason for that is a, a redesign they did a couple model years back. Engine on this as well is farther back, so it's farther from the cab. Okay. They also wrapped the exhaust to keep them quieter. Electronic controls on this for four wheel drive and diff lock. Yeah, and when I had to switch in and out of four wheel, it just makes it that much quicker. Yeah. And the seats are comfy as well, just like the old models of Defender. They're really well designed. The headrest is there. I felt pretty secure with the bar here. So one thing I was expecting when I hopped into this machine was that it would be a little longer to turn, it wouldn't turn as quick, and also I knew that we were gonna have to maneuver around some tight trees. I didn't know how that was gonna go. Really pleasantly surprised driving this. It felt like I was driving any other standard UTV or side-by-side -side, uh, in terms of how big it is, but when you look at this machine, it's noticeably longer than most of the other machines that we've tested. So just as maneuverable, and the power made it that much nicer to drive as well. You didn't feel like you were fighting the landscape at all it kind of no matter what was underneath it kind of just rolled right over yeah electronic power steering that yeah. was a nice feature as well yeah okay I let's take know. a look at the Kubota okay so Spencer let's talk about the sports car in the bunch here yes. a few years ago uh, Kubota introduced the XG line much peppier, sportier version than uh, the RTV line that they had been uh, offering which they still do but what we've seen today, this is our first time behind the wheel of one of these. This is a sporty machine mm -hmm. and by far the sportiest of this working group that we've yeah. got here. It's a gas engine, adequate power. We thought we saw on the hill climb, we were making it work, but it did the job. Second of two with an enclosed cab. Yeah. This cab was a little nicer. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the doors better, handles were nicer. Mm -hmm. The windows roll down in a normal fashion so yeah. you can get a large airflow going on there. Uh, of course, ours came with a windshield wiper which would be handy option in adverse conditions. Mm -hmm. Inside the cab, we've got fairly basic seating, uh, probably not as nice as some, as some of the others, but comfortable nonetheless. Yep. One thing I do like about this is Kubota has stayed with their mechanical control system. Yes. So to shift two wheel drive to four wheel drive is a mechanical lever. Diff lock, mechanical lever, the same as you'd find on a two wheel drive tractor. I like that, the simplicity is, is yes. nice. The parking brake is on the left side. It feels normal, it feels it, it familiar. Feels automotive. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, it feels like it might feel on a tractor that you're used to using. Yeah. Peppy good acceleration. Uh, we did get to use the winch. Um, that pulled us up, no sweat at all, the, yeah. the winch that this was equipped with. One of the nicest lighting packages I noticed, although we didn't get a chance to use it in the dark, but yeah. that would be handy. So looking, I guess, into the cab and towards the back, what's storage like on this compared to the Can-Am, which has amazing storage? You do have underseat storage in here, which is pretty good uh, on under both sides. So it's adequate if you've got a toolbox or something you want to put in. This, this isn't, yeah. this isn't bad. Yeah. 
and the tailgate. Uh, it's been uh, coated with that rock coating, so it's very tough, very durable. You're not gonna worry about scratching anything in the back of this machine. The lift is manual, which is, again, uh, it's maybe not as nice if you have a full load of firewood or something that you really need to dump and you don't wanna do it by hand, but it's familiar and it's easy to use. The tailgate on this machine was my favorite of the three, um, simply because of that ease of use. The standard latch pull, you can slam it shut. You have no worries of getting your fingers in the way. Whereas on the Mahindra, it was um, very similar, but you have to have the, the gate in maybe a bit more of a particular position to close it. Yeah, and what we saw today with just with, with our work here is when we needed to go run for something, this was the one we chose because it was just a peppy, simple little machine yeah. to get in and, and nice to operate. Yeah. If you're looking for a machine that can kind of do everything, offers that power, but offers also that little bit more of a sporty feel, then the Kubota is a great option yeah. for, that, yeah. for that. What we had today was essentially a sports car and two pickup trucks. So that's the unloaded portion of our testing. From here, we're gonna throw a load in the cargo bed on all these machines, run the, run the course, and then we're gonna get a trailer. And okay, we'll load that. let's see how it goes. So Scott, we just finished up the load test and the weight test. We've tested three machines today. So I personally felt that two of them did perform better than the one, but we'll get into the finer details right now. I was testing the most of the towing. So we had about 500 pounds loaded in the back uh, onto a trailer. So hauling over some really uneven terrain, driving the Can-Am, I didn't even notice that the trailer was behind me. It, other than the extended box and the extended length, I really didn't have to pay that much attention to it. It was easy to forget and very easy to maneuver. It's, um, almost forgettable that you have 500 pounds in the back. I could almost say the same for the Kubota actually. I really barely felt it in the back and it handled almost identical. The Kubota really wants to go and really wants to accelerate. So you notice that when you have weight in the back as well when you're trying to stop. But performance wise on uneven terrain, again, I barely felt that 500 pounds in the box. I can't say the same about the Mahindra, unfortunately. Going up some hills um, with the 500 pounds in a trailer, I really was struggling to get up to speed and I felt that the engine was really kind of sluggish. And I guess we can go into the load category on the Mahindra. We almost bottomed out the shocks when we tried to put the load directly into the box. So can you touch on that specifically in the Mahindra? Yeah, the Mahindra actually, unfortunately, we had to withdraw from the load uh, test because when we did put the 500 pound pallet into the back, we had virtually used up all the suspension travel. So <clears throat> to avoid any damage to the machine and for safety reasons, we didn't proceed with the Mahindra in that portion of the test. But with the other two machines, we were able to load that 500 pounds that was in the trailer directly into the box of the machine. And Scott did most of the testing for that. What can you tell us about how those machines felt that way? Testing with the load, yeah. no problem at all. Uh, virtually unnoticeable, really, yep. for the for the Kubota and, of course, the Can-Am was uh, the same. And I had an opportunity uh, last summer to drive the identical Can-Am with a thousand pounds in, which is double our load from today. And again, almost didn't know it was there. Yep. Uh, so that 82 horsepower Rotax engine mm -hmm. and the, the chassis design on the Can-Am is perfectly suited to yep. carrying cargo like that. The Kubota, uh, again, no problems there uh, with the 500 pound load and our roughly eight to 900 pound total GVW trailer. Uh, both of those two machines handled it easily. 
The only thing that we did notice was that uh, actually getting the hitch on and off was an issue um, on the Mahindra as well. Um, when we're trying to put our hitch in, it was very clunky and just not, not that easy to put on. Yeah, the design of the, of the hitch there, it was a bit tough getting the pin in. It, it did go in, but it's, it was just kind of a different design that uh, caused us some concern in getting that pin in, but we got it in yeah. and we got the trailer tow portion yeah. test done. Other than that, I can say that all machines did perform quite well today. It was about 30 degrees today here in Manitoba, so sitting in these hot cabs we did get pretty warm. Yeah, we had a really hot day, but to the credit of the machines, we did not get an engine temperature light. Yeah. So no mechanical problems that way. Yeah. To be honest, when it comes to hauling and putting loads in, I will have to say that maybe the Can-Am and the Kubota did outperform this specific Mahindra model that we have behind us. Yeah, when you start getting up towards the high end of the spec range for their capabilities, that's when you really start to notice the difference in performance in the machine. So yeah. if that's not something you need, if you just need a runabout, not a concern. So Scott, we've actually had a late entry to our testing today. Behind us is a Bobcat EV34 supplied by Duran Equipment. We put it through the same testing, the same rigmarole that we put the other three machines through. Tell us what you liked and what you didn't like about the Bobcat. Yeah, so this is day two of our testing, so that's why things look a little different. Likes and dislikes about the Bobcat. Let's start with the dislikes. Um, kind of an annoying whining sound at low throttle on startup and s slowing down and went under load at low throttle. It's not really a problem, it's just kind of one of those niggly little things that's kind of annoying. Really, other than that, uh, the only other negative we can mark on it is possibly in comparison to storage on the other machines. This does have a flip-up passenger seat with a very small storage tray underneath it, and of course, what that does is give you more floor space, so you could stack a larger item on the floor, which is something the other models didn't allow for in the cab. And under dash, there's some storage, but uh, the largest compartment has probably only about a four inch clearance. So if you had a pair of mitts on in the winter time trying to get something out of there, yeah. probably a little awkward. Positives, and there were lots of them. We yeah. like this machine. Yeah. Power, uh, probably second best in power to the Can-Am, which mm -hmm. came in at 82 horsepower, so we expected more power and torque there. Yeah. Hill climbing, uh, really good performance at low throttle on very yeah. steep grades. Yeah, you had the engine brake kind of kick in, so why don't you talk about that? Right, so on the downgrades, on very steep downgrades, uh, one of the best engine braking uh, of all the models that we tested to take your foot off the throttle on probably a 40 degree grade, mm -hmm and we basically stopped with yeah. two passengers in it just by taking your foot off the throttle. And even with the load on, we did test with a 500 pound, same 500 pound load, we found that engine braking, even in high range, very efficient in low range, but in high range, really, really good there too yeah. uh, with the load on. Yeah. Unfortunately, because this is day two of our testing, we lost some of our testing equipment, which was the trailer, so we couldn't tow. But based on our analysis of the load, uh, virtually hard to detect, really. We were weaving in and out of some trees, almost invisible that you're towing 500 pounds. So yeah. very impressive that way, similar to the canyon. So we would assume towing would be equally as, as good. We didn't have much suspension droop with, with that load no. on the back, hardly any at all. No, I was watching from a side angle and you barely saw the back end sag actually. So that was quite impressive. And one, just one last little niggly little thing that I, I forgot about was the tailgate latch. Yes. Uh, it's a two-handed latch. I mean, it's an automotive style, but just the, the friction to get it to pop loose yeah. was kind of annoying on a, on a two-hand, but close it, just give it a push and slams yeah. closed. Overall, high marks for this machine. So, Spencer, two days of testing, four machines, one of the most challenging UTV courses we've ever set up, yeah. and that wraps up our UTV review for this year. Yeah, probably the funnest course that we've had personally since I've been involved. We just want to say thank you to BKT, which was the sponsor of this year's UTV Challenge. And we want to say thank you to the dealerships that actually supply these machines. So the Can-Am uh, Defender Pro that we were trying today was supplied by Enns Brothers. The Mahindra 1000 that's behind us was supplied by Hydro Egg Supply. And the Kubota over there was supplied by Gen Egg. So we want to say thank you to those local dealers for giving us the machines to test today. And thank you for watching.